What's going on guys? Bangle again here coming back at you with another video today doing another Madden NFL 19 rebuild this time featuring the Cincinnati Bengals. Funnily enough, they're not how I have my name. It's just I'm a Giants fan, but today we will be attempting to rebuild the Cincinnati Bengals. One thing before we start, I'm looking at my face right now. It's a little bit red. I'm not sure why. I'm not sunburnt. I just might be uh, allergic to being so good. We'll have to see. We'll talk about the roster of the Cincinnati Bengals here in a minute. Geno Atkins just signed a massive deal. You have Tyler Eifert, who hopefully is healthy this year. AJ Green, and of course, let's lock and load the red rifle, Andy Dalton. Should be a good video. Let's see. Let's try to smash over 1,000 likes. Subscribe if you're not already. And let's jump right into it. Did I snap? I didn't like that I just snapped. But, you know, it's we did it. So, the Carlos, uh, Carlos Dunlap actually starts with a skill point here which is going to get him up to an 86 overall. Now, the thing I want to talk about this team with is some of its best players, and as you probably would figure, are the oldest on the team. Carlos Dunlap is 29. Geno Atkins is 30. We have, um, I don't know, at cornerback, there's not really much here. Darquez Denard's terrible. Drake Kirkpatrick is terrible. William Jackson is a beast. William Jackson the third out of Houston is an absolute monster he should be higher than an 85 overall but i can understand it. it was his first healthy year he was arguably the best cornerback in the league in terms of shutting down the opposing quarterback i think he had the lowest allowed passer rating in the entire nfl so he's a really good cornerback he shuts down opposing receivers whether the turnovers are there necessarily or not jesse bates the third another the third uh, i'm kind of confused i don't know why william jackson doesn't have it but Jesse Bates out of Wake Forest, I believe. He was a good safety. When I watched him, he looked like he was super solid. I think the Bengals got a pretty good deal on him in terms of uh, when they actually drafted him. He could have gone, in my opinion, as uh, early as late first. So great value pick on him. Speaking of great value picks, Malik Jefferson, another really talented player they drafted. And Sam Hubbard, another really talented player they drafted. As long as these players can regress, they could have a really solid team. The problem is, other than Carlos Dunlap, who's old, other than Michael Jackson, who's old, other than Geno Atkins, who's old, on offense, there's not much. AJ Green is 29. The offensive line overall is poor. Clinton Bowling had like two good years, and then he's kind of been average to below average ever since. Tyler Eifert's great. He's kind of in that ideal age range. He's just a little bit injury prone in real life, but we don't have to worry about that in the game. John Ross, hopefully he can progress. We got Tyler Boyd. And the red rifle is kind of a weird situation. And of course, uh, at running back, we're probably going to rock out with Joe Mix and Gio Bernard might get traded. With this Bengals, and this is a non-realistic style rebuild, so we're just going to do, you know, trading and get picks and players and things like that. We're kind of just going to do whatever. I will do a realistic rebuild somewhere down the line, I'm sure. But I got to get rid of a lot of these old players. Andy Dalton is our quarterback. Billy Price was a really solid pick by the Bengals. I liked him. Very versatile center slash guard. I got to get rid of some of these older players. I got to get value why I still can. Because this team right now cannot compete. It's not going to win anything. It really won't. So I got to trade what I can while I can trade it. While they're going to be at their highest overalls. So if that means Geno Atkins, Carlos Dunlap, Giovanni Bernard, Andy Dalton. Maybe even AJ Green get traded. Uh, don't feel too bad. Hey, I'm going to try to hold on to AJ Green, man, but he is 30. He's going to be like 90 overall by the end of the year. It's tough with the way regression works in Madden. I'm not sure why the Patriots' own interest in Dante Hightower is so low, but I don't mind doing this at all. Preston Brown, a 5 in the future next year, and a 6 this year gets me Dante Hightower. I don't know how that worked. <laughs> it did, though. The sack attack from the silver and black. He's actually going to be wearing orange and black. Carlos Dunlap, Geno Atkins, and a second round pick gets me Khalil Mack from the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> I don't know what that noise just was. It sounded like I just, I don't know. Um, Carlos Dunlap's contract is just not good. It, and neither is Geno Atkins. And they're both close to 30. Geno Atkins, of course, is 30. And this trade makes too much sense for me not to do it. Khalil Mack is just too talented of a player. It makes our team too good, essentially, for the future. I had to trade Geno Atkins. It, it just with regression in Madden, it doesn't make sense to have a player that's 30 years old and 29 as they're only going to regress. If he's a 98, 97, maybe it's different. 
he's a 92 he'll be an 89 at the end of the season i just can't deal with that starting running back is actually not going to be joe mixon it's going to be ezekiel elliott sean williams jordan willis and tyler croft get us the dallas cowboys starting running back former ohio states ezekiel elliott sean williams 27 years old don't really need him he's not that great jordan willis good player but we have Khalil Mack now, and of course, I didn't even talk enough about him. Carl Lawson's kind of a beast. Tyler Croft doesn't make any sense to have because we have a better Tyler in Tyler Eifert. Ezekiel Elliott will be the new starting running back. This gives us leeway to trade both Joe Mixon and Giovanni Bernard. Maybe I'll hold on to Joe Mixon, but Gio's gone for sure. And he doesn't even feel like he's older than 26. Really feels like he's older. I know it, like it wasn't, I guess, that long ago since he came out of UNC, but it feels like seven eight years now but it's not apparently i think it's worth the first round pick we're giving up i really do michael johnson drake kirkpatrick and a first gets us jj watt from the houston texans jj watt likely will play defensive tackle for us is that really the best spot for him we could change schemes which might be for the best if we move to a three four dante hightower would work really well at right outside linebacker we could kick vontez perfect inside carl lawson where would he fit in the 3-4? He would have to be an outside linebacker. In which case, I think Dante Hightower is versatile enough to just kick inside the middle linebacker. He probably is, but I don't know. Yeah, we might do that. We might play Dante Hightower at middle linebacker with Vontez Perfect. Carl Lawson at right outside linebacker. Khalil Mack at left outside linebacker. And then we'll have JJJ, uh, JJJJJ Watt at left end and all we'll need is a right end and a defensive tackle at that point either way we're like two positions away i think a three four might just be better for us though oh and this just lets us start sam hubbard that's actually probably even better so sam hubbard's gonna start we could go with glasgow andrew billings mm, it doesn't really matter at that point we'll go glasgow for the scheme fit jj watt perfect left end you imagine a team with khalil mack and jj watt effectively coming off the edge oh that would be pretty disgusting offensively i haven't traded the red rifle yet obviously i like matt barkley and who wouldn't love jeff driscoll <laughs> what a disaster he is um offensive line do you think cedric aboy he would have any value probably not Cordy Glenn's not great. The entire O-line except for Billy Price is expendable for me. And I should trade AJ Green too. I don't know if I'm going to though because I feel like at that point, is it really even the Bengals anymore? If I trade everybody? Probably not. Funny Bernard is headed to the Cowboys who, funnily enough, do not have a running back because Ezekiel Elliott has gone missing. Second round pick is going to, uh, is going to be what it costs to acquire Gio Bernard for them. So uh, I'm not quite done yet. I have I have another pretty big move in mind with that second round pick. And then I need to acquire a first, maybe two from somebody. The Red Rifle. Darquez Denard, who at this point to me feels kind of like a bus out of uh, where Michigan State. He's just not, he's never turned into much. He was a first round pick, kind of been like met his entire career. Much like every other Bengals cornerback that's been there aside from William Jackson, it looks like. And the second round pick we acquired from the Cowboys is enough to acquire Odell Beckham Jr., the heir apparent to A.J. Green, even though Odell in real life is probably better than A.J. Green at this point. We got a pretty sick receiving core now. John Ross in the slot, Odell and A.J. Green split out wide. That's a pretty, pretty lethal combo. Wow, that one, I was, I'm shocked this went through, but Joe Mixon, Vincent Ray is going to get us a one and a two from the Detroit Lions this year. And uh, now we're back to full strength on our draft picks, if you can see. One, two, three, four, five. We're just missing a six, actually. So, uh, I'm, I'm really shocked that went through. I would have tried to get more. CJ Uzoma, Nick Vigil, and Trey Hopkins gets me a one and a three from the Buffalo Bills. And I think I'm probably set with making trades. We're going to hold on to AJ Green. I don't really want to trade him. I just feel like at that point, you know... It's just this team has been dismantled so much. I do want to trade Cordy Glenn, who's not great. Clint Bowling, I want to trade. The offensive line's terrible. Matt Barkley's going to make do. He's got Odell and AJ Green and Tyler Eifert. I mean, what more do you want? We're going to upgrade Odell here a little bit. 
and uh, he looks I don't know, not not bad in the uh, the orange and black. These Bengals uniforms do look sick on the game though, so it, it's hard not to wear 76 overall. I I don't know Ryan Glasgow is there. I feel like Andrew Billings would make more sense as a nose tackle. Where do you go to school, Baylor? I feel like he was actually kind of sick there. I'm not sure why he hasn't been better. Regardless, this is the team. We're in a 3-4. We got Kavari Russell, William Jackson. Need him to have a big year. Offensively, Billy Price has got to show up. That's who I need to get points. Other than that, we're kind of whatever. But I will see you guys at the midseason mark. Something tells me we're going to have some players to re-sign. Odell, maybe? And by maybe, I mean definitely. Khalil Mack could be there. Almost definitely will be, actually. Who else could be here? That's probably it. All right, mid-season time here. Odell, of course, will be an impending free agent as we are. Five and three. That's way better than I expected we would be. That's way better. I'm sure the Ravens are one and seven. I'm sure the second half is going to be much worse, but Odell needs to be re-signed. We didn't go out and trade for him for nothing. Khalil Mack is here. Tyler Eifert is here. I wasn't aware of that. Fat Randy's on the team? <laughs> I didn't even know. No wonder we're 5-3. and three. Fat Randy's kicking us to the Super Bowl. Ooh, I didn't turn injuries off. Tyler Eifert broke his collarbone and doesn't re-sign. Odell and Khalil Mack both re-sign, though. I needed to turn injuries off because that is screwing some stuff up. We made the playoffs in year one with Matt Barkley as our starting quarterback. <laughs> Matt Barkley, you beauty. The Chiefs went 9-7. and seven. We won the division. That is unbelievable. How did this happen? Let's go ahead and take a look at the team schedule, see what we did here. So preseason 2-2, two and two. all right. And uh, we got off to a pretty hot start. Uh, this was kind of an easy schedule. We beat the Saints, though. Lost to the Ravens. They have, like, three wins this year. <laughs> beat the Browns barely. Beat the Broncos. Beat the Chargers. Lost to the Raiders. Lost to the Browns. And beat the Steelers. We've had a couple of close games here, though. That's unbelievable. In year one, we've made the playoffs. How did this happen? Of course, we have... No Tyler Eifert because uh, he broke his fucking collarbone. There he is. Matt Barkley. Honestly, career year. 4,100 yards, 31 touchdowns, 15 interceptions rushing. Ezekiel Elliott, 1,400 yards, 11 touchdowns. Great season for him. Didn't fumble the ball once. Receiving Odell beasted. Almost 100 catches, 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns. AJ Green did pretty well. Uh, you know, you see the regression from him, but John Ross stepped up huge huge season for him 700 yards seven touchdowns on only 52 catches tyler eifert was pretty good zeke was great out of the backfield as well offensive line overall was not bad and then defensively vantes perfect played pretty well led our team in tackles dante hightower also over 100 tackles for loss jj watt 12 khalil mack 10 led the team sacks they both had 12 and a half carl lawson 10 and a half even vantes perfect up the middle at five and a half interceptions Two from Kavari Russell led the team. And we're pretty much getting no interceptions. Which is uh, pretty annoying. As far as forced fumbles go. Four from Khalil Mack. He also had two recoveries which led the team. And I see at least one defensive touchdown. It's going to be William Jackson the third. Jackson Island. How do we do in defensive yards allowed? We were really solid. How is this team so good? <laughs> Matt Ryan wins MVP. Show me Matt Barkley. I see Ezekiel Elliott number eight. I'm upset not to see Barkley, I will say. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Le'Veon Bell. Zeke at number three. Matt Barkley in there at number 10. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Zach Cunningham, who's up to 91 overall. Khalil Mack, Vontez Burfecht in there at 8-9. No J.J. Watt. It's a shock. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to another rifle. The Rocket Arm. Huge hands. Looks great in shorts. Josh Allen from the Buffalo Bills. We have Mark Walton Jr. at number six. A lot of Broncos in here. Good lord. Defensive rookie of the year goes to Rashawn Evans. Jesse Bates in there at number five. Devontae Harris in there at number six. No other Bengals. Well, a lot of skill points for some of these guys. And the CPU signed Jonathan Hankins. 
I, I don't mind this, actually, because Jonathan Hankins is a beast. Former Giant, former Colt, another Ohio State guy to go along with Ezekiel Elliott. He goes up to an 86 overall. Mind you, this looks nothing like Jonathan Hankins. I guess they don't have him face scanned. But Jesse Bates has a ton of upgrade points, as does Carl Lawson. This is, this is big. So awesome. Carl Lawson made the Pro Bowl. Got star development. Of course, we just upgraded him a ton. He is up to an 85 overall. So that is awesome for our team. Things are going really, really well in this Bengals rebuild. And you got to think it's because of the, my name. I mean, there are no other explanations. All right, this is the upgraded team. It looks pretty good overall. Notable advancements. Jesse Bates up to an 83. Carl Lawson, 85. William Jackson up to an 89. Offensively, nothing too crazy. Odell up to a 98 with confidence. Zeke up to a 95. And then Billy Price up to a 79. But nothing too wild. Although, uh, let's go ahead and play the moments. And I guess see if we can win the Super Bowl year one with an 81 overall team. I feel like this is kind of lame. I kind of just want to simulate and actually play the moments later. When we actually should be able to win the Super Bowl or, you know, compete in the playoffs. In typical Bengals fashion, I'm sure this won't go very well. Defense needs help. Let's get tough and keep them from the end zone. I mean, I guess our defense is probably the best part of this team. The offense and Matt Barkley probably will let us down a little bit. We have Shrek on our line. He might be a target we look to throw the ball to. Oh my God, I'm actually gonna throw it to Shrek. Make a play. <laughs> His name is Shrek. I had to. We weren't going to score anyway. Not with that attitude, at least. Fourth and 12. This feels like going for it situation, right? Honestly, what does a field goal do for us except put us in better position to win the game? Am I really trying to do that? I don't know. There's Odell. I'll take the first. Dude, Shrek's on the field again. I'm not responsible for my actions. I might have to throw the ball to him. We're going to roll out. We're just going to dump it off to Odell. So that's a tough throw. He was running full speed. Shrek's got to work in those hands. Third down. We'll probably just wait until fourth to try and score. Because that seems where we find most of our success. Matt Barkley! Touchdown! Oh, he's going to go for the crane kick. Ah, oh, he, he faked me out. All right. We're going to take a 7-6 to six lead, and we might actually manage to win a playoff game. I don't believe it. I got to throw a pick or something. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Kendall Fuller. I guess his second pick of the game. It's great effort, AJ Green. We pass because we see a blitz. We figure we don't want to run right into it. And I mean, what more can you ask for effort-wise? I don't think much. And that's the game. We managed to get out of the first round. Can't believe it. Honestly, but we're probably just going to simulate the next one. I'm not ready for this video to be done. <laughs> All right, we're going to simulate here. And uh, I imagine we do not beat the Jaguars. As we do not. Off-season time. Oh yeah, Tyler Eifert's got to re-sign. And do we want Jonathan Hankins? Like, why not, right? Fat Randy's got to come back. All right, so Fat Randy, Tyler Eifert, and Jonathan Hankins all re-sign. Pretty good uh, start to the offseason for us as the Jaguars lost to the Rams 31-23 in the Super Bowl. It's in the top left. You guys can't see it, but you're going to have to take my word for it. And now it's time to sign some free agents. We got some money. Trevor Williams is here per usual. Geno Atkins is here. So he's down to an 89 overall, I think as I predicted. And the Dolphins are going to throw a lot of money at him. Honestly, I wouldn't mind bringing him back. So we signed Daryl Williams, Geno Atkins rejects. I wasn't going to pay him all the money that uh, he was being offered by the Dolphins. So that's fine. Go enjoy your money and uh, your retirement down there in Miami, as so many senior citizens do. Odell's up to a 99 overall. We had a, John Ross has an XP point, skill point, if you will. AJ Green's down to a 91, which I don't love. And then let's go ahead and work on John Ross in the slot. That's where he's going to be playing the majority of his action. So we'll do that. And then I need AJ Green to be better. Did I not trade Tyler Boyd? I could have sworn. 
All right, draft time. We pick eighth overall, and I believe we also have a spot at number 15. So let's see what is here. DeAndre Horton goes, cornerback I was looking at. 82 overall, not bad. Would be a pretty good pairing next to William Jackson. I'm going to go Martinez Dillon here out of LSU. Six foot, 184. Got good top three skills. He's going to fit our man-to-man -man style. 4-4-1 four, four, speed is very good. Great vert. Great broad. Great three cone. Great 20-yard shuttle. Martinez Dillon. 80 overall quick development. Ranked number 10 in the draft. We take him at number 8. I'll take that. He's got a little bit of a bigger face going on to fit his body. But, hey, no complaints. His on-field ability is good. There's another good cornerback out of Ole Miss, Dimitri Harrell. But I'm going strong safety here. Gilbert Benjamin out of A&M. The Texas A&M safety has great pursuit, tackle, zone coverage. He's a run support style, but with good zone coverage, he's got great speed. Great everything. Gilbert Benjamin, I'm not letting him slip to the second round. We're going to take him in the middle of the first. He is an 82 overall quick development, ranked number two in the class. He is the exact same as our previous draft pick, who I've already forgotten his name, if I'm being honest. I apologize. But Gilbert Benjamin, not a bad player by any means. He's a beast. Here, I'm going to go Ben Sperry out of Florida State. Got decent speed, but really, his combine was pretty phenomenal apart from the 40 he's got great top three skills though that's why i'm taking him ben sperry 77 overall out of florida state how good are you 80 speed but he's got 90 tackle 86 block shed good pursuit acceleration strength the zone coverage is a 78 oh it'd be it's gonna be tough to start him but he is very good normal development holds him back a lot i think i'm going clinton spillman here Left tackle out of Vandy. Good top three skills. Great bench press. Welcome to the team. 77 overall. Normal development, unfortunately. He's a good player, though. Ranked number 33 in the class. Of course, we did not take him at number one. We took him in the third round. Really good value pick. First round talent almost. Got him here in the third. Good, good stuff. Dude, we have three first round running backs here. Four even. I didn't even notice this one. We're in the third round, and they have not gone. Vaughn Owens out of Texas looks good. Davion Bailey looks pretty good. I, you know, I'm going running back. I know it's not a huge need. What's the what's the risk? He's a he's a first round talent. Here in the you know the late third round, good forty, good top three skills. Welcome to the team. Eighty overall, quick development. He's ranked number thirteen in the class. That's a solid late first or late third round pick if I've ever seen one. Not a lot of value with this pick. I'm going to see if I can trade it away for an offensive lineman. Doesn't look like we can really trade much for it. Nobody wants a fourth round pick. Shocker. But I am going to see what I can get for it in here. It looks like a fifth. Why would I Why would I just trade down and give it to you? A 2019 sixth? What is going through your head, Baltimore? Washington. We're in the 2019 draft now. You're not offering me anything else. You're just saying, like, yeah, we'll just... We'll take it, and you guys can just pick later. Uh, no. I guess we're going to go Case Polly. He's a center. Maybe we can play him at guard. He's not that fast, though. Billy Price could kick inside. He's not great. 73 overall. I mean, it's not terrible for where we are. Just, like, I can't I can't start that. It's not going to be a good starter. Maybe my quarterback in the future, though. Taylor Dragasevich out of Iowa. The Dragon. 73 overall normal dev like he's better than matt barkley but i mean that's not that's not saying too much his actual his stats aren't terrible they really aren't that's great medium great short pretty good deep accuracy especially coming out the arm strength isn't where i want it to be and of course his awareness is is bringing his overall down he's not awful just you know nothing special this was a bad quarterback class that's why i didn't take one i know i needed a quarterback i don't feel the need to just reach just for the sake of reaching so i didn't is there anyone who's decent here a lot of undrafted guys let's just go with the top guy on the board gabe baker we're not gonna do that we know he's a sixth round guy so no <laughs> um do we have a punter i don't know we uh we have two active kickers and a punter london cooley you're on the team now 74 overall pretty good pick actually all right draft recap time we actually did really well we did really well we had 380 overall players including 277s that are studs 
One will start, one will probably not. And then the end of the draft was overall solid as well, but the, the 380 pluses are just fantastic. Vaughn Owens likely will be traded because, I mean, we have Ezekiel Elliott. He could be the backup. I mean, we might even just do that. He's kind of a beast. Hook him horns. I don't know if I said that. I probably did. It's like a Tourette syndrome tick at this point. Cordy Glenn's got to get traded. We, knew to, we need to improve on the offensive line. We just do. Cordy Glenn, a four and a seven this year. The four is actually next year, excuse me. Against the Ali Marpet from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He will be starting at left guard. This now gives me pretty much free reign to trade uh, Clint Bowling. And I don't know, the center we drafted who's not very good. Case Polly, he's just, he's just, he could start at right guard. I don't know. But I'd like somebody better. Case Polly and a third gets me Quentin Nelson. Pretty ridiculous trade, but they've got to fix their trading system. Until then, I will continue to get really talented players for not much. Quentin Nelson will stay at left guard. Ali Marpet is going to move to right. And now we've got a really good offensive line. Turned around pretty quickly. You know, I feel like I would rather have the rookie middle linebacker we drafted Sperry than Dante Hightower at this point. So I'm going to move Dante Hightower back to right outside linebacker where he's going to have a higher overall. And I'm going to wager him. We're not going to do that. We're, uh, we're going to almost use him as a trade piece to get a better defensive tackle. As nice as Ryan Glasgow probably is, and as much as we need a quarterback, I'm going to work on defense again, and I'm going to get us a better defensive tackle. Actually, I'd rather get Jimmy Jesus... Dante Hightower, a one and a two. So we're trading a lot here, but we're getting Jimmy Garoppolo, our quarterback of the future. Jimmy Jesus is now a Cincinnati Bengal. All right. Oh my God. I don't know if you guys just saw that bottom one. I'm probably going to like leave it in. Anyway, on the bottom ticker, it said the Packers and Green Bay might be on the verge to swap picks in the draft. Now, I'm not sure about you guys. But what I think of the, the Packers in Green Bay, they split into two teams? Like, this is the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> what is going on with the bottom ticker? You know, the Cincinnati and the Bengals might be interested in exchanging picks. There's, did I misread that? There's no way. And the last trade I'm going to do is Tyler Dragosevich, London Cooley, and a second round pick next year for Jonathan Allen. We're pretty much mortgaging our draft picks at this point, but... I don't care. I mean, why would I? The team is already pretty sick. There's nothing that we're going to find in the draft that's really going to, you know, completely change the momentum of the team. Jonathan Allen will be playing defensive tackle. He was probably the best defensive tackle, the best interior defensive lineman in the country when he was at Alabama. He was a beast, and he dropped in the draft due to injury concerns. The Redskins were super lucky to grab him, and now we're going to go ahead and take him from the Redskins. He's going to stay at 85 overall at defensive tackle in this team is incredible great defense we're just waiting on some guys to develop a little bit more great offense this is the team that could win a ton of games let's go ahead and simulate straight to the playoffs see how we do actually that's irresponsible i'm going to stop it at the midseason mark all right we are four and three at the midseason mark i mean pretty much where we were last time the steelers however are six and one so our team has gotten better drastically better i might add yet we are significantly worse in terms of productivity ezekiel elliott is an impending free agent as is aj green william jackson those are going to be our three priority free agents our right, william jackson aj green and ezekiel elliott are going to resign with us and we're in a good spot we just need to turn it around here and make the playoffs so we would finish 12 and 4. I just we're, we're just a six second half team. And we lost our week 17 matchup. 35-31 to the defending Super Bowl champion Los Angeles Rams. How did it happen? So we won our first four and we lost our next three. And then we pretty much won out. We won out until facing the Rams, of course, no force wins per usual. Wow, weird. We didn't, win, we didn't win the division. 12-3-1 is better than 12-4. and four. And I wish Spillman had more skill points, but I'll take the rest of the offensive line having them. And then defensively, uh, no huge standouts, but Benjamin, who's up to an 87 overall with confidence after upgrading at the midseason mark, has five. Yeah, we're in a really good spot. This is a 90 overall team, 93 offense, 95 defense. 
we're gonna get them up pretty high this could be like a 93 overall team maybe even more so we upgraded the team we are 93 overall 95 defense 99 offense of course that is how you get 93 fat randy's gonna go up to a 77 overall so uh we're looking real good here we're looking real good i i was hoping that would take us up to a 95 but it or 94 but it did not anyway we're not gonna play the playoff games this year maybe in year three or four can we beat the new england patriots we can next up the division rival 12 3 and 1 pittsburgh steelers but let's check out the stats for the season i completely forgot jimmy jesus jimmy garoppolo 4200 yards 31 touchdowns 10 interceptions decent year ezekiel elliott six season 1500 yards 22 touchdowns no fumbles on 279 attempts receiving odell over a thousand yards six touchdowns john ross in the slot had 12 he had 12 touchdowns tyler eifert balled out aj green was like almost the exact same as last year blocking our offensive line was okay clinton sullivan needs some work gilbert benjamin the strong safety leads our team in tackles and oh my 12 tackles for loss from jonathan allen 10 from jj watt lead the team but khalil mack 23 and a half sacks breaking the nfl record for sacks in a season also had an interception 12 sacks for jj watt would be a number two and then interceptions william jackson had four jesse bates had three the rookie martinez dylan with two unreal force fumbles show me something six from vontez Burvick. five from khalil mack three from jj watt they were the only guys on the team that forced fumbles vontez Burvick had five recoveries at least two defensive touchdowns we get to khalil mack and william jackson what a season from khalil mack we were number one in the league in offensive yards and we also had the 10th best defense ezekiel elliott wins mvp where's jimmy g wow he's not even number nine that's khalil mack jimmy g's at number seven we had three players in the mvp race and khalil mack should have been one of them and he was afc offensive player of the year is not zeke it's Le'Veon bell what's going on here jimmy g again at number seven defense player of the year of course it's khalil mack how could you give it to anybody else and then vontez perfect at number nine offensive rookie of the year sergio baylark what were you quarterback maybe I, I don't recall von owens at number four he didn't even start defensive rookie of the year goes to gilbert benjamin no no wonder he's up to 91 overall ben sperry in there at number five martinez dylan in there at number six deshaun stone whoever that guy is and uh yeah this is a team that gets stuff done can we beat the steelers though that's the real question we can it's going to be the chargers in the conference championship to advance to the super bowl they went 11 and 5 are we good enough we are it's going to be these 12 and 4 Bengals. and oh my we are going up against the super bowl champions who already beat us in week 17 flashback to the two, uh, 2007 giants team that lost to the patriots in week 17 and then came back to beat them in the super bowl deja vu we're gonna play the moments on this one all right so we are at 94 overall 97 offense 99 defense i can't upgrade odell anymore because he's too good it's as far as it goes the way you could get around this is changing his position to tight end and then upgrading him and then changing him back to wide receiver you could do that if you wanted to the offensive line is solid and then defensively carl lawson up to a 93 overall vontes perfect 90 glow mac rocking a 99 gilbert benjamin are you a rookie he's a rookie he's a 95 overall gilbert calm down jesse bates at a 91 william jackson at a 95 martinez dylan are you also a rookie he is he's up to an 89 overall uh his man coverage is at a 99 because i've only done man and then i started doing zone it was at like a 77 it's up to an 84 now jonathan allen 89 jonathan hankins 89 yo we've got a team of just like we got william jackson the third and we got jesse bates the third and then we have jonathan hankins and jonathan allen something tells me we're not gonna have too many martinez or vantes is is on the team <laughs> or malik's or khalil's we don't really have much uh maybe there won't be any odell's or ezekiel's on the team other other than that but we had tyler eifert and we had uh tyler croft earlier all right i, I don't i'm there i'm making a comparison that doesn't really exist here like it kind of does but not really 
His team is sick, and we're actually finally winning. Oh, it's it's a beautiful feeling. All right, big third down. Make a stop as the rain comes pouring down here. Where are we for this? Super Bowl where? Where is this? Where are we playing? I have no idea where this is. Oh, uh, it's great discipline. That's why we're a Super Bowl caliber team. I really don't know where this is. He's fucking done it again. I'm gonna bench you, Carl. I mean, I'm not messing around. Oh damn, it was a uh, it was a false start last time. I totally was not paying attention. So we're actually fine then. But it's third and fifteen. We need to stop. Ben Sperry. It's your time to shine. Oh, oh my god, he's gonna lob it. Unbelievable. What happened there? Cooper Cup scored a touchdown, I guess, happened. I'm trying to figure... It, oh, this is Miami. We're in Miami right now. And we're back on defense. Great. And we didn't score. Fantastic. At least I figured out where we are. I figured out we're in Miami. It's a screen. I read that pretty well. It doesn't matter. I'm blocked. All right. Finally, we're on offense here. Down 10 nothing. We got Jimmy G... A good receiving core. And we got Shrek still on the field. That's a win. We're going to roll out. Jimmy G, run. Do we take the hit? Nah, we're going to take the end goal. First and goal. First and 10. From the 10. Uh, interesting. It's basically first and goal. And we'll take it down to the three. I'm looking for Shrek. He's not good, but he comes on the field a lot. That play action boot got to be the best play in the playbook. How do we score on third and 12? I don't know if I can dial up a post here. I don't think I can. I have no idea. Uh, we, had, we had open options. I'm going to go to R1. Jump! Oh my god, that's a broken neck. We're just going to take the field goal here. I have no kick arc. Of course, I play without vibration. I'm going to try to make this. And we do. All right. Touchdown game. We're in business. Fat Randy's going to kick us to a Super Bowl. Going to kick us to a Lombardi Trophy. And, of course, they drive down the field like it's nothing. Oh, my goodness. Of course, the thought in everybody's head is how are they going to perform the halftime show in the rain like this? Of course, now that Prince is dead. I don't think... Maybe... Mm, I'm not going to make a joke. I'm not really a joke guy, as you guys know. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on that opportunity to make a, a dead corpse prince joke. I've kind of just done it. That's a great play. Oh, that's mine. User pick easy reads. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Go Vontez, you're so slow. We got the easy reads and we should have had the pick six. But we can still score before half. Come on. Come on. We got Odell. Ah, uh, what a snag. I'm, of course, looking for Shrek. Get open, Shrek. Ah, uh, we have circle open. I gotta throw it. I gotta. I threw it way too late. I was looking for Shrek. Don't care! God damn it, Jimmy! We had the touchdown to Shrek. We're down 17-3. We're actually gonna do that again. Oh my god. He's done it. Down to the one. Shrek is love. Shrek is life. Go up there and get it, big fella. First and goal. It's your time to shine. Shrek, 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 Shrek. Come on, bro. So, inside the mind of uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. Hey, look at the two idiots shading to the outside of AJ Green. When I'm clearly going to run a slant. We dial up the slant with AJ Green. Look at the route. Look at the route here. That's a great route. Anyway, I anticipate AJ Green actually getting open when he's running the slant. Because this is what I might call defensive pass interference. I might hesitate to call it that. The throw also behind where the receiver should be. He should be throwing it to the open area with an inside pass lead like this. He doesn't. The route's terrible. The throw's terrible. 
and Michael Brockers. Now, I don't want to have to go into the depth chart to show you guys what Michael Brockers catching is. And we're on Sim. And, of course, it is all Madden. But Michael Brockers... He's listed at left end. What is your catching? If it's above 50, he has 27 catching. I'm... Yep, 17 to 3 is your final as the Rams will win back to back Lombardi trophies as they have, uh, you know, once again won the Super Bowl. Unbelievable. I didn't want to win it then anyway. I want to win it in year three. Uh, however, back to back Super Bowls would have been nice. All right, anybody important, free agent, impending? Jonathan Brown, we already have a kicker, and Fat Randy. Kavari Russell, we might want to re-sign. He's actually been pretty good. I'm looking, honestly, just for one player, and he's not here, so we're, we're going to be just fine. All right, Kavari Russell, Tyler Boyd return. I'm kind of, you know, out on the rest. I don't really need him. But I will say, if there's a talented free agent class, I might be inclined to sign somebody at which position, you might ask. I'm not even sure. Where do we even need anybody? If there's a sick wideout, maybe we got a 99 offense, 99 defense. I'm comfortable with everybody on the team. Maybe another cornerback. Kavari Russell's a decent three, but he's not amazing. Sterling Shepard. Sterling Shepard would be nice. I'm going to just stick out with John Ross. Jalen Mills will be nice. We sign him a lot. Kind of, we're fine. All right, there's no real point to draft because one, we don't really have picks. We're like the uh, New Orleans Saints in this year's draft class after they traded away a first to get Marcus Davenport and now a third to get Teddy Bridgewater. They do have a six round pick though and a second, so that's cool and probably some other stuff. But yeah, also no one that we would draft would be on the team. I mean, well, would even play at all. So there's not really much of a point. Derek Elliott, top cornerback. Boom, you're on the team. 73 overall. Works for me. That's the end of the draft. This is the team for the third and what I assume will be the final season as we're 99 offense, 99 defense. How are we going to lose? I really don't know. I think it's just straight to the place, uh, pl playoffs. Pl playoffs? I can't even speak. Uh, we're going to go straight to the playoffs. And I'm pretty convinced we're going to make them. So we definitely made the playoffs. We went 11-5 and five winning the division. We also have a ton of coach XP, which doesn't matter, and a lot of skill points as well. Let's check out the stats, see how we got here. Jimmy Jesus, 4,600 yards, 35 touchdowns, 9 interceptions, rushing. Zeke, kind of a down year, but still great. 1,100 yards, 13 touchdowns, receiving. Odell, 1,200 yards, 6 touchdowns. John Ross, another huge season with 12 TDs and an interesting number of touchdowns there for three receivers in a row. As our offensive line was, once again, not great. Vontaze, perfect letter, team of tackles, and Khalil Mack has outdone himself yet again. 12 tackles for loss from J.J. Watts, cool, or whatever. 24 sacks from Khalil Mack, once again breaking a record, this time his own. 12 and a half from J.J. Watt at number two. And interceptions, Khalil Mack also had one, but William Jackson led the team with four. Four fumbles, I see five, it's Khalil Mack. Four from Vontaze, perfect. Three from Gilbert Benjamin. If Khalil Mack does not win back-to-back, defensive MVPs player of the years if you, you want to say that I would be shocked MVP goes to Matt Ryan Jimmy G at number three Khalil Mack at number six he's climbing up even higher ASC offensive player of the year is Jimmy Garoppolo Zeke at number seven defensive player of the year is once again Khalil Mack that's why you go out and trade for him offensive rookie of the year uh and defensive rookie of the year both for the Raiders but both don't matter because Chuck the Raiders record it's probably not very good who upgrade for Shrek to a little bit annoyed that I now know his name. This bothers me slightly. We're going to upgrade him a little bit, though. And, uh... Interesting. It's kind of funny, uh, since... I don't know if you guys knew this. <laughs> Not to brag, but I am an EA game changer. Pretty cool, right? Anyway, for a lot of the guys that are not face scanned, the faces come from, like, EA employees at Madden down in Orlando. And it's weird seeing players like be people that you're familiar with and have met like not Gilbert Benjamin for example but um I'm sure maybe he probably is somebody but like Clay Fidelum or however you say his name he's one I don't know it's just it's kind of a me thing that's cool for me this is the squad 99 offense 99 defense which equates to a 99 overall 
we have a divisional round matchup against the 10-5-1 Miami Dolphins. Paul Brown Stadium. All right, I'll see you there. All right, we are up 10-7. And we have two minutes to drive down the field and get a touchdown. Awesome that you put me in for the two-minute warning. All right, Shrek. I need you to get open here, buddy. Oh, we're going to lead him inside. Shrek! Get out of my swamp! First down! I'm looking for Shrek. Oh, man. I'm real. I'm a one-trick pony. I throw it to Shrek or I take a sack. Or throw a pick. It's I, I, But that's throwing a Shrek anyway. We're just going to kick a field goal here, probably. And I will super sim it so I do not miss it. And uh, we do. I, I just simulated to the end. Let's not do that. Let's play key moments. Another field goal. I'm, I can't kick it, so no. Nope, can't do that. All right, here we go. Defensive stop time. To screen. Uh-uh-uh. And they can't do anything. McNutt is busted. There he is. Shrek is going to be on the fade. Tyler Eifert's going to take coverage away. And they're going to have one-on-one. -on -one. There it is. That's underthrown. Shrek would have been there. I can't. That's, come on, Jimmy. Pick it off. Let's go. William Jackson. That's got to be pick six. Ryan Tannehill. You're really, you're really messing with me. That's William Jackson, second pick of the game. That could do it. All right, Shrek. Big, big first down here. This could ice the game. We're going to throw it to him. Shrek. Let's go, baby. And now Vontez Perfect is in. Do we give him a deep shot? That would be irresponsible. I'm kind of for it, but I kind of want to win. It's a great catch. Who is Sperry? My other. We don't really have tight end depth, it looks like. I'm really throwing this game away just for the sake. Just for the sake of, like, furthering this meme. <laughs> it happens, it happens, I guess. All right, we're actually headed to overtime. Unbelievable. Well, actually, very believably, if you've seen the game, which you have. I've really. I've thrown this away. Are we not just going to kick it? There we go. Thank God. Dude, they would have screwed that up in simulation. I would have been incensed. We win the game, however. We're advancing. That's all that matters. All right, it's going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars in the AFC Conference Championship. Let's get it. Super Bowl inbound. Really close game. 19-14 to 14 here in the third quarter. This first time I'm jumping in, i just been kind of letting it play out a little bit. Tight end cross is coming out, which means that, yes, Shrek will be a target here. I can't really fit it in there. I'm going to throw it a circle. What a, what a dumb decision. I think I've really tried to give it to Shrek maybe, maybe once too many times. Because we're literally throwing the game away. <laughs> we probably could have won the Super Bowl last year. All right, Shrek, get in the end zone. We're throwing it to him. High point. He drops it poetic that's gonna do it for me guys <laughs> this was a fun video to make i enjoyed it shrek is uh he's a beast and super bowl mvp even though this was the afc conference championship we're gonna give it to him anyway in honor of his ability thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed this is one of the best teams i've built i think let me know what you think down in the comment section below and i will see you in the next one take it easy